Amen. Amen. I'm going to okay. invite you to turn your attention to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Amen. And I'm going to begin reading at verse number 24. That's John's Gospel, the 20th chapter. Verse number 24. And you'll find okay. some words like these. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands and the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst of them and said, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered him and said, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. That's the word of God for God's people. Verses 24 through 29. Amen. And I wish we had the time to read this entire chapter because it's, it's just so um, encouraging to us as believers. But I believe yes. the Lord wants us to look at these specific words today. And I gave this message the title, Have Faith. Have Faith. All right. Jesus said it this way. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Because the disciples, as they were gathered, the twelve, in the upper room, it was said they were back inside again, waiting for instructions from the Lord. They knew what they had seen him do. Mm -hmm. They had seen him do the unbelievable, the impossible miracles, signs, and wonders. Yet, here we are expecting um, support rather than walking on faith. Mm -hmm. So yes, Jesus could have done just as he did. Okay, Thomas, even though I wasn't in the room, I, I knew what you were saying. You, you wanted to see my hands and you wanted to see my side. You wanted proof because you weren't there at the cross. We know you weren't there then. It was only a handful who stayed with Jesus to, all the way to the cross. So you weren't there then, and you weren't there when I came the first time. So yeah, let, let me have this conversation with you. What, what you are looking for is proof. What I'm offering you is faith. I need you to be believing in all that you have seen me do and done, all the teachings that I have given you as I have walked with yeah. you for three years. Jesus is saying that faith is enough. Yes. And the first point I have for us today from this message is that we have to understand our assignment. Yes. yes. And that assignment is simple. It's, it's the, the one verse that every Christian knows. And it's John 3 and 16 that tells us that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, you know, I, I, I can't help but think about the way that we operate each and every day. We have all seen um, at work where new policies roll out. Committees are formed and, and projects are started and nothing ever changes. There's never any results from those things. 
And I believe that's because people fail to understand the assignment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we all heard the same message and we all translated that into what we wanted it to be, what we wanted to do. And when that happens enough, when you see enough policies roll out only to be rolled back, when you see enough committees started saying this is going to be the outcome and nothing ever comes out, then you do lose faith. But when we look at Jesus, the foundation, the pillar of our faith, the change that we see in people who are in the body of Christ are miraculous. And that's why God gives us our testimonies. Because we are living witnesses. If someone never yes, yes, yes. read the word, but they knew you in 1980 and they know you now in 2023, they would say that th there had to be a miracle that made this change. Yeah, yeah. There had to be something that they encountered that made them different from what they were. We are oh, yeah. our living testimonies and our assignment is simple. Believe in Jesus. And when we do that one thing, then all the people around us are impacted. It says that when we um, come to know Jesus, it's important to know that Jesus was all man, yet he was all God. Experience the same things that, that we experienced. Got frustrated at the powers and the empire that was in place in Jerusalem at this time. He was a, a rabbi. He taught his followers. That means that he planned lessons, that, that he, uh -huh. he set objectives. I'm going to give them this lesson, and this is what I'm expecting them to receive. This is the results that I'm expecting. Jesus healed. He touched people. And because of their faith, they were able to receive the healing that was available to them. He raised the dead. He died and rose. And at this time, when the disciples are in the room all together, all the 12, was not the only time that he appeared. He appeared to people for over 40 days after the crucifixion. I am convinced today that when we go back mm -hmm. to that very basic teaching, that very yeah, basic yeah. scripture that is always the first one we learn as believers, that God so loves us. When we believe on Jesus, we can have yeah. everlasting life. It is already available and that impacts everything else that we do. Mm -hmm. yes, we can expect as we go about this life, living uh, for Jesus, living in faith, our next point, we can expect unlikely circumstances. We can expect for, for every new day to unfold something new that's going to cause us to need new faith, that's going to yeah. cause us to believe better than we did yesterday, yeah. that's going to pull something out of us that we haven't yes. used before and didn't even know it was there. Yes. You know, when I think about um, the biblical text and all the support that there is for faith and trusting in our God who never fails, I'm reminded of the story of Joseph. And Joseph was um, one of the sons of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was betrayed uh -huh. by his brothers. We know him to have been the favorite of, of his dad. And his dad mm -hmm. had given him a, a coat of many colors that made him the envy of his brothers. So they sold him into slavery. Even mm -hmm. though he was betrayed by his brothers, it was him that brought salvation to the tribe of Israel. That all of the yeah. brothers were brought to Egypt and survived in a time of famine, a time where there was um, needs that could not be met any other way because Joseph alone 
have been given the instructions of how to prepare for such a time as that. Yes, and, and, and it yes, is yes. still one of my favorite verses in Genesis, and it's um, verse 50 and 20, that says what the mm -hmm. enemy meant for evil, God worked it out for my good. He told his brothers, you don't, you don't even have to, you don't even have to apologize because I know mm -hmm. now that all that I have been through, all those unexpected and unlikely circumstances, all the people that I ran into on the way, all the time that I sat in a prison cell, all of that was for a purpose, for such a time yeah. as this, yeah. because God always meant it for his good. Yeah. I believe as believers, we fall into two categories. Either our witness, we, we can't wait to tell it. Everybody we meet hears our story. Uh -huh. Or we have a story that people may never know. God may just have that story for the one person who needs to hear it to believe and have faith. Unlikely circumstances should be expected. And we have to have the faith to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Yes, How, yes, however, yes, yes. however, we were compelled to accept Jesus. However, we found him. Whatever we were into when he plucked us up out of the miry clay. Who would have thought we even get to know him this way? S some of us were actively running from the Lord, doing mm -hmm. everything that we wanted to do, not wanting that's any right. anyone right. to um, tell us how to live or what was right or what was wrong. The, the, the yeah, biblical right. text calls that doing what was right in our own eyes. Uh -huh. And we've had those times, but our story, however unlikely, whatever brought us to Jesus is just as unlikely for that person who's going to hear it. No. That person who's looking at you and want to know how, how are you the way you are? We have to be willing to take that time and say, well, it wasn't always this way. Yes. I, I wasn't always this confident mm -hmm. in my faith. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't always this sure that God had something especially for me, that there was a purpose mm -hmm. for my life. That God called me to do something that no one can do but me. That's it. That's it. I'm grateful today to have people who will share their testimony. That's yeah, what encourages yeah. the people of faith. I mean, some of us can read the biblical text and put ourselves in the situation of those people. The, the, the disciples that Jesus called as he started his ministry that were some of them were at work. I'm at work cleaning my fishnets. For me, that would be I'm, I'm wrapping up and, and sending my last email for the day. And Jesus mm. stopped by and said, follow me. I encourage us all to share our testimony. That builds our faith and the faith of others. And when we have faith, there is not one single thing we cannot do. Yes, Lord. When we understand our assignment, when we go each and every day expecting unlikely circumstances, mm -hmm. only then will we live the transformed life that God has called us to do. And that's our third point for us not to conform, but to be transformed. And we all know that text from Romans. 12 yes. and 2 that tells us that we are transformed by the renewal of our mind. What's that mean? That means that God can change our mind. Yeah, yeah. All we have to do is ask. Believe in faith and it will be done. I don't know how many times Jesus said it, but he only had to say it one time for me. That's if it. you believe and trust in me. I promise you that everything you ask, you shall receive. Yes, Thank yes. you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank Unfortunately, you. we think of transformation as trying to look more like Christians instead of yeah. more like Christ. 
we think of transformation as looking more like Christians than looking more like Christ. We are called to be yes. followers of Jesus, not followers yes, yes. of the pastor, not follower of the mother who wears the, the favorite hat that we like. We are called yes. to be followers of Jesus. That's who we should look like. Yes. That's our yes. standard. To love when people are hating you. Not only yes. hating you, physically harming you. To love in spite of that. Because we know that love is power. And it's the, one of the greatest yeah. powers that we have. And we are able to love because we have faith. Because yeah. we know that it's not always what it looks like. That God is constantly working things out for our good. I love um, Psalm 121. It says that, that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. That's it. He is always working on our behalf. You know, I, I used to be one of those that would stay up late at night worrying, trying to find some, something to worry about. Waking up, ooh, mm -hmm. I forgot to worry about that. But how many of you know that the worry that I do or used to do never changed yeah, yeah. a thing? When I gave it all over to God in faith, when I was able to have faith, it lifts such a burden because when you are trying to do things all by yourself, then you have that responsibility. That's you it. literally have the weight of the world on your, on your shoulders. When he who created the world is waiting to take that weight away. That is transformation that changes your whole life. When you allow that thing to be lifted away, that thing that you've been struggling with, burdened with, when you lay it down, never to pick it up again, just hand it over to God who is faithful, who has never let you down, who, who is able to lift big, heavy burdens and is willing to do it for you. And you know yeah, yeah. I can't even um, say the word um, transform without thinking about the movie, The Transformers. And, and it's so um, such a great metaphor for our lives because we mm -hmm. in the Transformers, there were these little clunky old cars that didn't look like they could even run anymore. But when they yeah, transformed, yeah. they turned into something great and powerful. Optimus yeah. Prime, yeah. everybody's favorite, Bumblebee. Turned oh, in yeah. from an from a old clunker to something that could accomplish so much more. Yeah. We have that power available to us. I, I love this passage of scripture because it's, it's so like us. And we, and we can so easily separate ourselves from the apostles, from the disciples and saying, well, why, why wouldn't they believe? They had Jesus right there. Do you need to believe when you have what you're already believing in? They were mm. believing in the Messiah. They had him right there with them. That doesn't grow your faith. What grows your faith is when Jesus tells you, I'm about to leave. I'm going to prepare yeah, yeah. a place for you. I'm going to come uh, back for you. But what I need you to do is tell everyone everywhere what I have told you. Tell them all what you have seen me do. The people you've seen me heal. The miracles I have done in your sight. That's what I'm going to leave you with. But not only that. And I believe that we, we, we need to cut Thomas just a little bit of slack. Because if we go back further in this verse, in this chapter, in verse number 22. The first time Jesus appeared in the room to the disciples, it says Thomas was not there. Mm -hmm. In verse 22, it says, and when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. Thomas wasn't there. He wasn't there to have that transform that's transforming encounter with Jesus. 
Yeah, yeah. He 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 wasn't there. But Jesus made the point to return when Thomas was. Uh-huh. He's not leaving any of us behind. If you have Thank been you walking with the Lord for what seems like a long time, and you don't have the faith that you feel like you should have, Jesus will give that to you when you ask. I, I want to encourage all of us today to be like that um, father who brought his son to Jesus to be healed. His son had been epileptic since birth. They said that he would foam at the mouth and fall down and sometimes near the fire where he always almost put himself on fire. And he brought him to Jesus to be healed. And he says, Jesus asked him, do you believe? And he says, the mm. father cried out and said, yes, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I believed enough to get my son here. Help me believe that what exactly I need you to do shall be done. That's and let it. that be our prayer today. Lord, yes, we believe. We have seen you do it. We have read your word. We know that you're able. Help our unbelief. I believe that is the call and the charge for us as believers. That is our assignment. And we have to understand it before we can go any further in the Lord. We have to believe. We have to have faith. Jesus said, do not be unbelieving, but believing. That's one of those words that's, a, that's an action word that you're doing it right now. Believing. Uh, yes. You are doing it in everything that you do. Every encounter that you have, every word that you speak should be filled with the confidence that God is working on our behalf. Even yes, in the Thank unlikely Lord. circumstances that we find ourselves in, in those circumstances that we don't know how we got there, but we know it was the Lord who brought us out. Yes. That's where we have faith. And when we have that faith is when we are transformed. We are no longer, you know, in, in the transformers, the, the cars they didn't look like what they used to look like. You couldn't, you, you, there was no way you could mistake what I used to be with what I am now. Yes, yes. I am encouraged today that the word that the Lord has for us, have faith. Don't, don't, don't have give faith. up on God now because he surely yes. has not given up on you. We, 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 yes, we know I that, know. we know that God works in a process. And God can work instantly. I'm believing God for both. Yes. I'm believing God for everything that I have laid the petitions at his feet shall be done right now in Jesus' name. I am believing yes, that the work that I see him doing and the people that I've encountered, that the word that I spoke to them changed just a little. I'm expecting transformation because I serve yes. a transforming God. There is nothing that our God can't do when we believe. Amen. I am so grateful today to be able to share this message with you. And I pray that it has encouraged you as we get ready to um, release those who have joined us on Facebook. We do thank you. We love you. We pray that everything that we have said today will impact you that your faith will be stronger, that you won't be unbelieving, but believing. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord.